Welcome back. This is the second part of my overview of the state of death and taxes in Historic. If you missed the first part, I was going back over the performance of my Azurius and Orzhov versions of the archetype and evaluating the role of each card in both the main decks and sideboards. Now in part two, I'm going to be looking at some possible additions to both versions of the deck from among the new cards added since Zendikar Ryzen. I've picked out 35 candidates and will be ranking them on a scale from future all-stars at Arbiter level down to cards that miss the mark at a Ruster level. Starting with Kaldime, Glorious Protector is one of several new options to help shore up the deck against its biggest weakness, Sweepers. The stats immediately call to mind Restoration Angel, although the ability changes from flickering to a Banisher Priest-like effect in exchange for exiling multiple of your own creatures. This is mostly great, since Restoration Angel can't save a creature from a Sweeper at all, and this can save your whole board. Exiling a Deputy of Detention with this so that the opponent's Sweeper kills their own creature instead also seems pretty fun. Unlike Resto, though, rescuing something from just spot removal is certainly clunkier. My feeling is that the addition of Fortel doesn't really change much here, but I'd need to try that out to know for sure. Altogether, I'd say the Protector is Minister-worthy. The closest comparison for the front side of Redain is Archon of Emeria, with similar stats and hate for Snowlands instead of non-basics. Redain's tax is also nicely suited to disrupting big control spells, including Sweepers. While I think the front side is the one more likely to be cast, having the choice of team-wide damage prevention and ward 1 on the back side is definitely nice versatility. A decent portion of this grade has to come down to how often you'll be seeing Snowlands, and they don't seem very prevalent in the historic meta at the moment. That leaves Redain looking to really only be effective against control, so I'm not sure that she's main deckable. I'll put her at deputy for now. Usher of the Fallen is a possible replacement for the 1-mana 2-1s in the current decks, so it's competing against Dauntless Bodyguard and Gutter Bones. I don't really think this is better than Bodyguard, and it's questionable even compared to Gutter Bones, since spending mana on going wide isn't really what this deck wants to do. That makes it stay down in Arrester. A new historic anthology brought us Thraben Inspector, a very different take on a one-drop, and one that I like better. This compares more to Acquisitions Expert in the Orzop version, being a 1-2 that generates card advantage, but at one mana less. Replacing the Expert and Gutter Bones with this plus another two-drop seems like a good deal, so I'll put the Inspector in at Deputy. Moving on to Strixhaven, Elite Spellbinder seems like a slam dunk for Death and Taxes. An aggressively statted flyer that gives you a peek at what the opponent is up to and taxes their scariest threat is perfectly on game plan. I imagine this will go into all versions of the deck and gives us our first Arbiter rank addition. I don't imagine Luka is ever getting cast, so we can pretend that this card is just Mila. We also aren't running any Planeswalkers, so we can basically ignore the first ability as well. That makes it similar to a flag bearer that cantrips when it dies, although the opponent can just let you draw a card to ignore Mila when they critically need to deal with something else. Ways to refill your hand are certainly welcome, but the body isn't anything special, and the protection Mila offers remains pretty soft. I'd put this in at Justicia at best. Professor of Symbology depends entirely on what's available as lessons. If there's something good there, a piker that draws you an answer is great. If not, a piker that rummages is not worth it at all. The obvious lesson intended for Death and Taxes is Academic Probation, but I really don't think this card does enough to justify burning a valuable sideboard slot. I don't think the token makers are good enough either, so after those, you could consider removal in the form of Reduced to Memory. This does seem like the best deal, being able to handle any problem permanent, but at best you'd spend one sideboard slot and one main deck on the Professor. This seems underwhelming, ranking around Justicia level. Selfless Glyphweaver is another new anti-sweeper option. The upside here is that you can play this to the board immediately and keep tapping out going forward with no need to hold up a reactive spell. The body is nothing special, however, and the protection offered by Glyphweaver isn't complete, failing to stop things like Extinction Event and Languish. This deserves a look, but probably only at around deputy level. Strixhaven gave another pretty exciting card in Silver Quill Silencer. A soft meddling mage effect with the upside of an additional point of power is certainly tempting. Sometimes you really just need to deny your opponent the ability to cast a crucial spell, and the Silencer won't do the job. But this seems like a fantastic 2-drop to put into Orzhov, maybe to replace Acquisitions Expert, making it Minister level. Strict Proctor is quite similar to Hushbringer, but mostly not as good. In general, Hushbringer is excellent sideboard tech against Death and Taxes, since there are so many creatures with ETB abilities in the decks. Proctor wouldn't shut out your own triggers completely, but if you're able to pay to let them through, your opponent can probably afford to do the same. This just isn't disrupting the right things, putting it in at a rester. Gelatinous Cube wants to be compared to Ravenous Chupacabra, also being a 4-mana ETB removal creature. 
Its stats are much better at 4-3 instead of 2-2, in exchange for its removal not being permanent until you can sink more mana into it. Notably, it is also Exile versus Destroy when that distinction is important. I'm not sure how onerous the Ooze's Dissolve mana payment really is. It certainly makes Flicker shenanigans more costly. I think this would need some play to see if it strikes a good balance, but the upsides are real, putting it in around Deputy. Guardian of Faith is yet another new anti-sweeper option. I'm really happy to see so many new pieces of tech being printed to shore up DNT's weaknesses. This offers unconditional but reactive team protection, similar to Glorious Protector, but at a selfless Glyph Weaver price, and with a better body to boot. The deck doesn't make good use of Phasing's upside of not removing counters or equipment, so not being able to retrigger ETBs like the Angel can is certainly a weakness. I feel this is probably between the Protector and the Glyph Weaver, and probably closer to the Protector, so I'll put the Guardian up in Minister. Loyal Warhound has a classic white ramp ability that we really haven't seen in a while. A 3-1 body with Vigilance for 2 is certainly aggressively costed, and when on the draw or against a ramping body, this does provide legitimate 2 for 1 value. The question is just whether I'd rather be disrupting the opponent versus helping myself when this does happen to a line. This is probably filler level, but good filler, which makes it around Justicer. Jumpstart Horizons brought several potential goodies, the first of which is a brand new card in Esper Sentinel. The most obvious way of thinking about this effect is that it acts as a soft Thalia at a manner cheaper and with downgraded stats. Notably, it also doesn't shut down stormy decks like Thalia does, since Sentinel only taxes the first non-creature each turn. Similar to Mila and Silver Quill Silencer, Sentinel's power hinges on how bad it is to allow the opponent to buy their way out of the disruption effect. Given that this is on a 1-drop, I think this is probably worth it, even if the opponent just lets you draw a card off their turn 4 sweeper, making Sentinel probably around Minister level. Ranger Captain of Eos really depends on the quality of your 1-drops. In my current decks, those are Dauntless Bodyguard, Siren Storm Tamer, Gutter Bones, and Knight of the Ebon Legion, with possible new additions of Thraben Inspector and Esper Sentinel. None of these are really lock pieces, so this represents value more than it does toolboxiness. The sack ability is interesting, since you would really need to have a good handle on what the opponent was about to do to make it worth it. A 3 3 for 3 is a nice body though, and coming along with your best 1 drop is powerful, but I'm not sure how well it really fits in. I'd put it around deputy level. Jumpstart Horizons also brings the classic Restoration Angel into Historic. Whether retriggering ETBs, countering spot removal, or just being a surprise evasive threat, Resto does a lot. Looking back to Glorious Protector, I do have to wonder which is really better in this particular deck. As weird as it is to say, Resto not being able to help with sweepers makes me want to give the nod to the Kaldime Newcomer. I can't put this too far behind it though, so I think it's fine to be in Minister level as well. Ambitious Farmhand is another take on plane searching, trading the ramp portion for always triggering. And while sometimes you can upgrade this to a much better 3-3 lifelinking body, the initial body is much worse than Loyal Warhound. When things are going well, this deck is likely able to achieve Coven, but those aren't really the places that I especially need to sink more mana into transforming. If I were to go with one land fetcher, I think the Warhound is likely better, leaving this probably as far down as a rester. Reanimation is not a trick present in the current decks, but Bereave Survivor bringing back a 2-drop could be very powerful. It does require some setup though, and I'm a bit skeptical of adding new cards that are hurt by our own graveyard hate. This is kind of interesting, but I don't think it quite gets there, also sitting down in the arrestor pile. Brutal Cathar is a new and improved Banisher Priest with the ability to flip into a very relevant 3-3 first striking body with Ward come nighttime. You also have the potential to nab multiple creatures with it, but I wouldn't count on that happening too much. This certainly isn't as good as Skyclave Apparition in the same slot, but there is a lot of space between playable and Apparition. I'm not sure how often Nighttime will come up in Historic, so that would require some experimentation. I'll put this in at an optimistic Deputy for now. Enchantments can be a problem for these decks, which is why I include a Mortify in the sideboard of the Orzhov version. Our first card from Midnight Hunt, Cathar Commando, offers the ability to deal with those while also playing to the board in other times, providing a potential main deck answer at the same 3 mana instant speed price tag. The body is okay, and surprise flash attackers are always nice. Since this probably does warrant at least a sideboard slot, I'll rank the Commando at Justicer. Chaplain of Alms is a bit of a weird card, since almost all the value is on the backside. A 1-1 first strike just isn't going to do that much on the ground. So assuming this dies and its Disturb isn't stopped by our own Graveyard Hate, how much does the deck really want a 4-mana 2-1 flying first strike that gives Ward 1 to the team? 
Maybe a bit, but ultimately, I think that price is a bit steep and the setup is a bit unwieldy, sliding this down to a raster. Dinic, on the other hand, provides a lot of value for the price. The body is well statted on both sides, and each offer a different kind of upside, with some minor graveyard hate on the front and potential card draw on the back. It is unfortunate that the better upside is also the one that would be shut down by our own graveyard hate, though. The front doesn't really stop much, with many popular graveyard-centric plays slipping through. Regardless, there is a lot of potential in Dinic, and I'm going to try him out for sure. Perhaps Minister is correct, but I'm going to put him all the way up into Arbiter for now. Gavany Dongard is similar to Ranger Captain of Eos, being a 3-3 for 3 that can draw small creatures. The Dongard requires more work for less card selection for sure, but she can also get the bulk of creatures in the deck and potentially be repeatable. I'm actually more excited about this card than the Captain, putting this in at at least Deputy. A bit of an odd candidate, Graveyard Trespasser provides good stats, a strong ward ability, and both immediate and repeatable graveyard hate that also gives some reach. This really doesn't ever need to see nighttime to be good. The closest comparison is probably Caneros from the Orzhov sideboard, and in a lot of situations this will be better. It may have a role to play, putting it into Deputy. Intrepid Adversary is obviously more of a go white card, not offering anything disruptive, but this is at minimum an aggressive early body that can also turn into a late game overrun. While that can be powerful, I don't think it synergizes well enough with the rest of the deck to warrant more than a Justicia rating. I'm pretty psyched for Malevolent Hermit. A Piker is the minimum acceptable aggressive body, but the powerful delay for removal or sweepers combined with the extra body on the back make this outclass Siren Storm Tamer for sure. Leaving up a mana is a real cost, but this could be one of the better cards in the deck against control, while being acceptable anywhere. I think Hermit is at least Minister level. Spectral Adversary greatly improves on the Piker body by adding Flash and Flying, and brings along another multi-kicker ability, this time potentially letting you save your own creatures from removal or phase out some enemy blockers. If you're paying the kicker once, this ends up being pretty comparable to Restoration Angel as a 3-mana flyer saving one thing, but provides more versatility being played anywhere along the curve. As such, I think this fits right in beside the Angel at Minister. Sun Gold Sentinel might just be a better version of what Graveyard Trespasser wants to do, giving the same graveyard hate and power while costing 1 mana less. The potential with Coven to protect itself better than Ward and give better reach with unblockability in the right situation puts a lot of value into a 2-drop creature. This may be as high as Minister. Cemetery Illuminator is another card providing the same graveyard disruption, this one adding flying and letting you cast, hopefully, creatures off the top of your library. This is pretty nice, so I'll put it alongside the Trespasser at Deputy. Finally, moving into Crimson Vow, we start with Dorothea. She clearly wants to be compared to Geist of St. Traft, trading off his Hexproof for the semi-recurrence of Disturb. The question is really how important a potential beater like this is in Azurius. There are a decent number of flyers to put the aura on, so this could be worth a lot of damage, but I'm not convinced that it's really what I want to be spending mana on. I'll rank this as another Deputy. Dream Shackle Geist essentially provides lockdown of an opposing creature on an aggressive, evasive body. This may mean that it has a place against medium to large creature-focused decks. It not doing much in other settings, though, makes me leery of spending a slot on it, so I'll leave it at Justicia. Fleeting Spirit provides a resilient threat reminiscent of a Danto Vanguard. These decks aren't great at getting things into the graveyard, though, and some of the time there won't be a graveyard at all. I feel like if you want this type of threat, you'll probably be better off just using the Vanguard, and since I'm not already running that, this leaves this down in a raster. Graph Reaver is an interesting one. Planeswalkers can be a source of pain for these decks, and even if you aren't facing one down, this is quite aggressive at a 3-3 for 2 that pings you. Perhaps it's even too aggressive, since games do have the potential to stall a bit when you're deploying a lot of disruption. I could still easily see this as a one of sideboard choice though, putting it in around Deputy. Savior of Olenbach is an interesting toolpiece, providing a hybrid of removal and reanimation similar to Angel of Serenity. However, it does nothing on ETB and needs to be able to attack cleanly to start generating good value. Even if you could reliably train it on its first attack, in Historic I think this is just too slow. Worth a look for sure, but ultimately this ends up in a raster. Welcoming Vampire is an exciting new addition for White Weenie strategies. In a lot of ways, I think this is just better than Mentor of the Meek. Sure, you can only draw one card per turn, but don't have to pay any mana for the ability, and it's all on a 2-3 flyer. I know that when I'm curving out, I often don't have the spare mana to pay for Mentor anyway, so I'd hazard that this will end up drawing more cards on average. 
I'm pretty high on this card, and I'm willing to put it all the way up into Arbiter. And that's the last of them. Hopefully this was an interesting look at how some of the newer cards might fit into the Death and Taxes archetype in Historic. As with the first part, I'm sure there may be cards that I ranked incorrectly or even missed entirely, so let me know in the comments section. I'm going to be making adjustments to both versions of the deck to put some of these new additions through their paces, so make sure to subscribe to catch new Historic gameplay videos when they come out. Until then, thanks for watching.